Dragon Dragonfly 17 and Christine Alexandria. I like that Alexandria. Good morning. So we've got to realize one thing. Can you all hear me? Hello there, Apple Brooks, honey. Can you all hear me? So I was listening to the daily um, update from one day at a time. I've shared her channel on this YouTube channel in the community section. Um, she's a single woman, uh, a mother who co um, shares, you know, with her children and stuff like that, her husband, her ex-husband and stuff like that. But she sold her house and she now lives on a boat called Jemiah. I think it's Jemiah. I think it would have, she refurbished it, redid it, and she was walking along the side of the canal or something in the cold to go pick up her car that broke down um, in the cold, in the mist, and she was saying that she was cutting the cords to control, and um, she envisioned control like a, got it all together, more or less, you all, and I thought, you know, that's right. Cutting the cords of control because there was a time that we were able, I included, I had more control over my life and where, what direction my life was going. I did. Uh, I like control. I, I, I'm just going to admit, I like control. I like some control, but I don't want a, an oppressing control. Okay. I want my, con I want some control but I want the freedom also. I want a balance is what I want, a balance of it. But as you can see in this world, <laughs> everything's out of control, it seems like. There is no, there's no way to grasp control at times because some things that used to be within your power to like control somewhat, you can't do that anymore. You literally got to live each day, one day at a time, because the control that was once available, it's gone. And some people may have a problem realizing that. Some people may still be trying to control this world that is so chaotic, and they're finding out they can't control it. It's like trying to steer a ship on the stormy seas without a sail, okay? Without a sail, without a rudder, you, it, 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 you, you're, you're at the becking call of the, the seas, okay, you are, you, it, it's practically impossible, you're going to get tossed back and forth, the key is you want to anchor yourself so you don't get tossed over until the seas settle down, you all, so there's some things in this life we can't control, and it's control, um, and we can't go back, I know personally, from what I'm doing now on the YouTube channel, I used to have a normal job, a normal, normal life like everyone else. But since I resigned from my job, my real job that I had, um, and decided I needed to come on here and devote this as my, make this my job because of the information that I'm sharing, I thought, you know what? And even to the last time, even up to the very last day, the last hour of the day um, before I resigned from that job to do what I'm doing full time, I prayed, if I'm making a mistake, please let me know. Send me a sign. Send me a message. I prayed it all day long, even though I turned in my resignation. Um, I got the message. Okay, it's time for you to leave, Gina. That's what it, I got what I asked for. I did. I realized I had, I have to leave. My spirit couldn't stay there any longer because my spirit knew that I need to be focusing on what I'm doing because it was, it was tearing me apart. You all, it was. There were things that I couldn't control. I, I couldn't control this, this spirit within me saying, Gina, trying to pull me, you know, you need to, because this is really where my heart was at right here, doing what I'm doing. Um, couldn't control. It, it, it was becoming too unbalanced. Uh, and now I know I, there's no going back. <laughs> there's no going back from where I am right now. There isn't. Um, I guess maybe sometime down the line, maybe if I have to, you know, if I'm no longer doing this, I could 
like go back to somewhat of a normal life, but I, there's no more normal. There isn't. It's a new normal, you all. Come on now. Good morning. Yeah, so there is no going back. And you may, you may realize also that as we're on this journey, there's no going back to the way things used to be. Okay, people have changed. They have. We just admit it. People have changed and friendships, circles, circles of friendship and stuff like that, that's changed too. Relationships have changed. The world has changed. It's like every facet of our society has changed and we find ourselves on a bumpy road. It's not impossible to travel down this bumpy road, even though there's potholes. You just avoid the potholes, and if you step in one, that's okay. You step in a pothole, twist your ankle, keep going. Brace yourself, fix your ankle up, and just keep going, you all. It is hard not to change in all of that. That's right. And um, change is a part of life, you all. You, when you change, you, we hope that the change that we do is for the better. It, it's painful. It's very painful going through change especially when like you switch jobs um, you get a divorce um, you have to move from the house that you're in to something else you take on a new job you switch jobs uh, you have a baby you have um, all kinds of things you are uh, you lose your job you can't find no job and then the standard of living that you're used to, your lifestyle, it's no longer there. Or you get fired from your job. Um, you've got a family, and now how are you going to feed your family? How are you going to pay your bills? Um, sometimes change is very painful, and change will break a person. It will break you. You'll find out what you're made of when you go through the change. You could say it's like a chaos that comes in life. Um, how can you make order out of chaos? You are really, if you think about it, can chaos bring about some type of order that's not so oppressing in our life, not so oppressive, can it? Um, good morning, let me see. Um, none of us, that's right, Tony, we're not going back. We're not. We're not going back to the way things used to be. This is, this is our new life. This is a new life. I mean, it's like a new timeline that we find ourselves on. It really is. And um, you can either win the, you know, that phrase, S-H-T, or whatever they call, hits the fan. Um, you, you can decide what you're going to do when that happens in your life. And it's a, it's a, it's, I don't like that phrase. I don't, because I don't like the, you know. But really, you can give up completely just give up and say okay life you've you've got the best of me i'm broken you've done it you've broken me and i don't want to move i don't want to change i'm just going to sit here and i'm going to rot i'm not changing i'm not adapting i'm just going to be me and whatever comes comes i'm not changing and uh and then what if that's you and then you go into a downward spiral because you refuse to change uh, for the better because sometimes you have to change on the inside to at least change your way of thinking to make yourself stronger even though you refuse to change to the way this world is changing you've going to have it's going to bring about an internal change on the inside of you. you it's going to be the fight or flight is what it's going to be fight or flight um, and some people may say, I, I take the flight, I'm leaving this earth, I don't care anymore, I give up. Don't give up. Um, especially if you wanted to stay and fight, and then all of a sudden you got beat down so hard you didn't want to get back up because they beat you down so hard. And you say, I give up, mm, I'm, 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 I'm out of here, I am out of here. You are. That's the easy way out. That's the easy way out. Don't take the easy way out. You're so close to the finish line. You really are. You're so close. Don't give up, you all. Um, don't, be, don't give up, even if you got like a hurdle, um, a great big hurdle, and you say, I can't even, I don't have the strength to even jump over that hurdle. That's okay. If you have to walk up to that hurdle, 
a high hurdle on a track, then you just take one leg and you just stick it over the hurdle and then you take the other leg and you stick it over the hurdle and then you continue to the finish line. It's that simple. Even though you weren't going full strength, see this is what I compare it to. I was really good at sprinting. Um, in high school I was, I was a really good sprinter and I would always, I could do the 200 really good, the 50, the 100 and you know when you do the the 800 relay and stuff, I was put on the end because I ran fast, I did. So on um, this one race, um, when it was my turn uh, to run the 800, I started off so fast on the 200 part and I got um, three quarters away from where I was, I only had a one fourth to go. I passed everybody up, I ran out of steam. And there was, it was the high hurdles the high hurdles. I was jumping the high hurdles all the way there. And then as I got one fourth of the way to the end, I realized, Gina, honey, you ain't got no strength in you. How are you going to get over that hurdle? And the people from behind me, they passed me up because I went out too fast. I thought, that's okay. <laughs> I walked up to the last hurdle, the last two hurdles, and I stuck my leg over the hurdle and I stuck the other way, leg over the holder and I, I jogged to the finish line, but I made it. I didn't give up. I was kind of disappointed in myself because I didn't pace myself. And really, that's what I've done on this YouTube, too, and on social media. Full blast, just like that, you all. Full blast uh, with the information that I'm sharing. I kind of really don't pace myself, and that's, that's me. It really is. And sometimes I want to slow down, and then sometimes I do slow down. But then I thought, why are you slowing down, Gina? And then I pick up speed again. I... I'm not going to give up. I'm not. I'm going to I'm going to finish. I'm going to finish the race. I'm going to keep going regardless if I sprint it all the way 3 fourths of the way. You I'm going to keep going. It's okay. The the thing is you don't give up even though it gets rough, even though you're tired. All of that, you all. Don't give up. There's some things that are beyond our control to fix. Some things that are beyond our control to control. They're going to do what they're going to do. Things are going to play out the way that they are already planned to play out. Our lives, um, I don't know what the future holds. I really don't know, but I know who holds the future. I do. Um, I know that I will never know what the future holds if I give up now. I will never know. I'll never know what's up there on the road if I was to continue on this journey. I'll never know if there was something good waiting for me. Why? Because if I gave up, that's why. I'd, I'd never know if my life was going to take a change for the better. I would never know. That's why you got to keep going. You don't know if your life's going to change for the better or not. If you give up, you don't know. That's why you can't give up. You got to keep going. Things can turn around. They really can. Situations can turn around in your life. I've, I've witnessed it personally and a lot of people have witnessed it personally. It may be rough getting to that change, but it's not the end of the world. It might be the end of that world that you lived in and then it's the beginning of another world. It's like a chapter in a book, the end of a bad chapter. Then you start the next chapter and things are looking brighter in your life. Um, sometimes some chapters are back to back bad but you're, you're growing through it. You're growing through the hard times. You know you're growing through the hard times, you all. You, you've learned a lot during this past four years. I've learned a lot. I've learned I can't give up uh, despite what comes against me, despite the spiritual realm. Um, and the spiritual realm is powerful too, you all, on both sides. Um, you've got the bad, the dark that's pushing against you, wanting you to give up, and you've got the light that's telling you don't give up. Please don't give up. Keep going. And see, we're doing this on a personal level ourselves. But can you imagine in the spiritual realm what is taking place between the light and the dark? The same thing. And um, the energy that happens there is the energy also that comes down here on earth. And this energy here, it spills over. Both realms spill over into one another. They intermingle. So there's things in this life we cannot control that we can't. And 
it is good to realize that and like kind of relinquish that control. Say, you know, I can't control it anymore. I'm not even going to waste my time trying to. I'm going to make the best of the situation. I am. And um, you can do that. You can establish boundaries in your life. You can. You can, you can stay strong during all of it, you all. Just don't give up. That's right. Don't give up, you all. Um, the dark before the light. Yeah. The light at the end of that tunnel, you all. <laughs> yes, Australia is down. West, honey, what you talking about, you all? So now we can, I'm going to focus on the comments, you all. But I mean, West, what you talking about? Let me, let me put this up here, you all. I got to get a drink of my coffee. There's only probably, um, uh, an ounce or two left. Mm-hmm. You have been placed in the darkness so I can shine the light to others to find their way. That's a wonderful way to look at it. It is. Mm-hmm. Okay, I've got it. Yeah. Um... True, Mike. Um, so Australia is down. Well, um, my house is kind of messy, but my husband decorated. He likes to decorate, and I don't. So he really went all out doing it. He did. And it's okay. It's nice and festive. I don't mind festivus, festivus whatever. Uh, I will say in the summer months, uh, you wouldn't see any of this around. What you'd see around in the summer months is uh, I got a messy house you all do. Um, I remember when my kids were real little and my husband was, um, doing his one year remote in Korea. If we lived in Henderson, Nevada, my children were probably, I don't know, three and five. Well, I just let them put their toys anywhere they wanted to. And, um, they would play, we had carpet all through the house and like in the dining room area, there was carpet and the kids had their toys out around the table. Sometimes they'd play underneath the table. I remember my father-in-law coming over and he'd say, Johnny would have a fit if he saw how messy this house was. And I'm sitting there thinking, it's just the children's toys. <laughs> That's all it was. It was the children's toys under the table and on the floor. And it, it was not messy, you all, but he, I remember him saying that Johnny would have a fit if he saw how messy this house was. My house did not get that messy. It, it was children with their toys, you all. So, yeah. Um, how did I get on that? Okay, let's talk about my house is messy. That's right. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a pretty tree, you all. And there's some people that don't like Christmas. And uh, they don't want others celebrating Christmas. But that's okay. I, I like I don't have a problem with it. I think it's... um pretty. I think the tree looks pretty. Uh, it's a beautiful piece of artwork. It is. Gina, honey, do you worship that tree? No, I don't worship that tree. Um, I don't. I, I don't have a problem with decorations. And um, the Amish. I remember working with the Amish. Well, not working. When they was building a house, the one Amish lady came over and she was sitting there and she said the fire looks so nice they're not allowed to even look at the fire. When they have a wood stove, it has to be closed in completely because in their religion, they're not allowed to look at the fire. She said, but I can come over here and look at your fire. Okay, <laughs> go ahead and look at it because I don't got a problem looking at it. It provides warmth and it's nice and it's relaxing. Yeah, so there's many, there's many different beliefs. Uh, but don't push your belief on somebody else, okay? Just because you feel a certain way, um, there's, you gotta leave room for others as long as they don't oppress you, okay? As long as they don't oppress you, you all. And I like that tree, it really is pretty. I like it. It's nice and um, pretty with this, yeah. So we got it. Yeah, you like the fire to stare at. And if you want to look at a flame on a candle, that's nice to look at too, you all. It really is. Um, the thing is with this, my, my husband, he, he takes all the stuff back down, puts it all back in the container, um, and he has to put it up. I don't, I don't do it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to do it. 
There are control freaks. There are, not, it's not a nice name, but it, there is, you all. Control freaks. Yeah. When you got kids at home, it's lived in. That's right. One moment. One moment. One time in Nevada, you all, it was Christmas time. It was Christmas time in Nevada, and my children were really little. They were in elementary school. And my, my son, he was still in diapers, but he could crawl around and stuff. And um, so that he probably was like one and a half or so. And my daughter, like two years, two and a half years older. Me and my husband were outside in the garage. I was putting an engine in this F-150, a 1983 F-150. And um, pulled that engine out and putting in the clutch and stuff into the evening. And it was getting dark. There was all these presents under the tree for the kids. And we walked in there. There was my daughter and my son. They had already ripped the paper off half the presents. It was so cute. It really was. <laughs> they ripped the, the wrapping paper off the presents, and they were just so innocent. They didn't know. Mom and Dad was out there in the garage messing with the engine on a truck. It was so cute, you I miss those days. But I got the memories, and they're grown up, so that's perfect. It is. Hello there, um, Julia from Russia. You've been keeping watching all your videos and streams. It reminds me of the Maltai and the family of Malta. Oh, thank you. I'm getting hot standing here. Yeah, your husband is a control freak. Well, that's okay. Hopefully, as he gets older, he mellows out. Yeah, you are sick of the demons. I, I don't know anybody who isn't sick of the demons. You are. This stove is kind of hot. If I was, um, let's get the nutcrackers. You know, I like um, to watch that, um, that nutcracker thing where they dance or something. Yeah. Look at our nativity scene. I found this right here. When we lived in Nevada, they threw a nativity scene in the trash and um, I saved it. I saved it. One piece is missing. But yeah, that was um, in Nevada. They had good stuff that people threw out. Yeah, I got to step outside because it's so hot in here. Silver, silver is the money. Whew. Yeah. It's a nice, rainy, dreary day, you all. It is. So, um, what the topic? Um, I got to think of the topic again, you all. I can't even remember the topic. I know that there is no going back. There's no going back at all on this road that we found ourselves on. And you can make the best of it, which I would encourage you to make the best of this life that you you found found yourself in. Even though it's changed, make the best of it. Don't give up. Um, yeah. <sighs> I thought something on my head. It's, um, it's hard work. The garden, the gardening is very hard work. Um, because in the, the springtime, my husband has to pull all the weeds out get the garden ready and it's really hard work. Sometimes you have to dig them out. Sometimes he'll take the tiller and then he'll till under the roots after he does it. But to maintain it, it's hard work, it really is. And when you get the fruit, your vegetables and stuff, it's hard work processing them also and putting them, canning them in jars and stuff and peeling apples from the fruit trees. It's a lot of hard work, you are hours. Hours worth of work um, doing this stuff. So yeah, what looks like pretty and stuff and it's it takes like practically all day for my husband even after the grass is mowed for him to go outside with the weed eater and um, the, the smaller push mower and weed eat and trim. It, it's a lot. And the gathering of the wood if you have to do it yourself. The sawing it up, the splitting it, the stacking it, that's hard work too. If, if you had to hit it with a axe, that's really hard work. It'll get you in shape. It will, you all. Don't be afraid of hard work. Some people are afraid of hard work. Uh, they don't want to do it. 
like this wood stove right here, you all. Um, that's right. This wood stove, there's lots of people that will not have a fireplace and they will not have a wood stove because this stuff gets all over the place and they don't want to sweep it up. They don't want to sweep it up. It's too messy. So they'd rather do without. There, there's a lot of people, they want a spotless thing. Well, if you're freezing to death, are you going to say it's too messy and you got a stove in your house and you don't want to put wood in it because you think it's too messy and you'll have to sweep it up? No, you're going to, I hope that you wouldn't freeze to death. I hope that you would utilize that stove, you all. Yeah, the, the heat is nice. I remember my father-in-law coming over after we had moved here and we had that stove and it was kind of chilly outside or chilly in the house. It was warm in the house and chilly outside, but it got too warm. You know what I do? I leave the door open. He said, you're wasting all that heat. I said, well, we split that wood. I don't care. I want to feel the air from the outside. I want to look outside and I want to look at the fire. And it doesn't matter to me. Um, it doesn't. I'm not turning my furnace on in the house. We do have a furnace, you all. Okay. We've got a furnace, but we don't use it. We just use that wood stove. So yeah, that's a pretty tree. And I, I love the colors. I, I look at it as a beautiful piece of art. And I like to go to museums too and look at paintings, but not the new paintings, no. I like the old, old paintings. Um, so yeah, that's my tree. Our first year we lived here, we went out and we got a tree. We cut our own tree down and it touched practically up there to the beam. And we had a white angel up there with the dressed in white. And uh, something happened. And the angel thing got uh, short and it got a little fire up there. And then that angel got thrown out. But uh, that was the tallest tree we ever had. Yeah. The squirrels. Well, the squirrels are outside. And um, they're out here somewhere. We got birds, we got birds, we got turkeys, we got all kinds of birds. We had to come out here and feed them. Um, so that's the routine, come out here, feed the birds, scatter some stuff on the ground because a flock of turkeys comes too. And um, the squirrels are probably, I don't know what they're doing, hibernating maybe. They got their nest way up in the trees, you all, they do. So um, there's no going back. There's some things that are beyond our control and we live in a world that we can't control the things that we used to, you all. Uh, yeah, wild turkeys. This world, the things you used to control, you're, you're finding out you can't control them. And if you're someone who likes control, that's driving you up a wall. And it's making you very irritable on the inside because you can't fix it. You can't control it. Uh, so to those people who are like control freaks, <laughs> I don't like that name, who like to be in control. I'm sure that you're finding it very, very difficult to control, or if you're around somebody who likes to be like that, they're finding stuff very difficult and they're getting irritated and they're making your life a little bit miserable. Um, if you're that person, don't do that to somebody else, don't, because it's, it's hard enough, it's stressful enough trying to adapt to this ever-changing world that we are in because it's, it's continually changing and the change is not done. The change has only just begun, only just begun, you all. And you've got to strengthen yourself up on the inside right here to be strong enough to weather anything that comes your way. Um, when I was watching the short video, the update from the One Day at a Time YouTube channel that I shared, how she was walking in the cold and the damp to get her car at the mechanic, um, she said they're going to get a deep, a deep cold, a very deep cold. So she had to put water in her boat tank, her and her boat next to her. Um, like at six o'clock at night, she was out there hooking up the holes from the tap so they could have water because the, the hoses are gonna freeze. And um, she said, but now she has water. See, she was not too lazy to go out there and knowing her water tank needed water in it to hook up that hose in the cold and the rain uh, so that she could have water. Um, 
Yeah, you do what you got to do. If you see, if you know something's coming, if you know a storm is coming, if you know the freezing cold is coming and you can take preparations, you can make preparations, then you're better off if you do that. If you see something coming, you better get prepared. Really, you better. Um, because knowing something's coming and sitting there and say, well, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Well, I'll just depend on such and such. They got it all. What if such and such can't help you? Okay, you got to you gotta look around and raise your awareness. Uh, you can be aware of what's happening, aware enough to prepare. You don't need to have yourself go into a downward spiral. If you're a person who likes control and you're finding out, well, you can't control the things that you used to, you can't even control what you want to put on your table anymore because now you ain't got the money to buy the things you want or go out to eat at the restaurants that you want to go out to eat at, go buy the clothes you want to go, get the car you wanted to get, get the job you wanted to get, get the house you wanted to get. Uh, you may find that you're going to have to pull it together on the inside and reprioritize, reorganize yourself on the inside and the way you think about life. You're going to have to do that or you're not going to make it. And you can't just sit there in a misery, throw your hands up in the air, I give up, when you have a family. You can't do that. No, you, you fight. You fight for your family's existence, more, more or less. You fight for your own existence or you, you're out of this earth. You're out of the game. You got to fight. You got to fight to stay alive. You got to fight to survive every single day of your life. You cannot give in no matter what comes against you. You've got to stand up and get that fighting spirit within you. Get determined inside of you. Say, no, you're not going to beat me down and crush my spirit and keep me down. I'm going to live. I want to live. And it doesn't matter if I don't have the quality of life that I used to have. It doesn't matter. The goal is I'm going to I'm going to keep going. I'm going to make the best of it. I'm not giving up despite any energy anything that comes against you. Don't give up, you all. you got to survive. we got to survive so we can make it to the end, whenever that end may be. Um, that's right. Yes, you got to push through it. Push back. When life pushes you, you push back. Say, no, you're not going to keep pushing me and pushing me and pushing me and pushing me and pushing me to the extent that I just want to throw my hands up in the air and give up. No. Can you imagine it? You, you got somebody in front of you just pushing you and pushing you and pushing you and pushing you. When you want to go forward, you want to continue. And that's all they do is keep pushing you and pushing you and you just keep letting them push you. That's life. Life, you can, you can picture a physical being doing that, pushing you, trying to push you and push you and push you and intimidate you to give up. Don't give up. That's right. Don't give up. You keep going. If you have to walk in the cold and the mist to your, pick up your vehicle like one day at a time, like Sam did, walked to go pick up her vehicle. She didn't care. She had a backpack on her back. She was dressed for the weather. It didn't hurt her. So she'd go and pick up her vehicle. You can do it. That's right. T, honey, that's okay. You, at least you'll put forth an effort. You'll do your best to stand up. You'll do your best to stand up, and there's strength in numbers. Okay, there is strength in numbers, you all. That's right. And use some common sense. Use some common sense when you decide you're going to stand up and you're going to fight back. Do it in the right way. Do it, do it from in here in the peaceful, loving, harmonious way that will bring peace to your life, even though it might feel a little bit uncomfortable. Okay, yeah, you got to fight back. You got to have that fighting spirit. You owe it to yourself and your family, your friends, especially if they're looking up to you. you all don't give up. Don't. Yes, that's right. You got to have an inner smile um yes um oh you rainbow turtle yeah that's right so uh, i am going to go you all there's some things that we cannot control and you're realizing the things you used to control you have no control over it anymore you don't and you're having to change the way you think about life in order to proceed forward Okay, because you're not going to give up. You already determined you're not giving up. Then they, they done went too far. You're not giving up. That's it. You've, you've already drawn the line. Say, no, no, you're not going to beat me down. I'm not giving up. You've already reached that point. So I'm going to go. And um, with that being said, hello, wherever you are in any part of the world.
Hello. From my heart to yours, love you. Have a wonderful rest of your day, you all. So when I get through doing this video, I'm going to go into that bathroom and I'm going to open up that bathroom cabinet where the sink is and I'm going to replace the leaking valve. So that's what I'm going to be doing in between videos, you all. I may have to go to the Home Depot and get a new valve, shut off valve for the water. Um, but I'm going to do it because I'm not giving up. Even though it's leaking, I thought, you know what, I'm going to fix it. I'm not going to let that. I'm aware that it's leaking and if I don't do something now, when I want to do something later, I may not be able to do it. You all don't put things off either, especially if you've got things like that in your house. Um, don't put it off. Do it. If you're capable of doing it, if you're physically able and you, you can do something, do it. Don't put it off because that chance of tomorrow may not come for you that you may look for what you need and it's not there. Do it now. Wrap up the loose ends that you got to wrap up. Have a wonderful, um, hello there, Christine. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you, um, Apple Brooks, honey. Uh, thank you, Susan B., honey. If there's any other moderator on here, thank you. Um, have a wonderful rest of your morning. I will see you all later. Hopefully, I'll have that um, new faucet, that new valve where the water line is. That's where it's at. Cut off and replaced or something, you all. Love you.